Okay, folks, uh, this is Gary Gerritz here, and this is our, our first video for uh, drawing and design for game. So these are some example drawings I made for blocking out the figure for the third week's homework. So I'm going to start out with an action figure. So I'm using this uh, sumo wrestler as our reference, right? Just trying to exaggerate the pose, make it as clear as possible, make sure it reads, but definitely exaggerating the source material. Now I'm trying to get everybody to exaggerate, uh, yet use the human figure as our starting point. And as I do this, I'm um, using these little drawings off to the side that I picked up in Pinterest, and I'm trying to figure out the anatomy and the size differences right now. This shows a much more aggressive posture to the figure, uh, trying to show at the same time, leave myself this idea of the three-dimensional form and block that out. But I'm not copying it. What I'm doing is I'm trying to figure out the proportions. I'm definitely going for a more skinnier sort of leg to counterbalance the large upper body, a larger head so I can show a little bit more expression and in general still keep the whole thing uh, rational uh, so it's believable. Even though I'm picking some fairly athletic poses I'm still trying to keep the balance there uh, so it doesn't look like it's falling over. Uh, also I'll be in a sense not putting any clothes on to it uh, and just blocking out the general forms because clothing or costume will come into the next step of the process. So at this point I'm doing sort of basically a ballet or a dance between uh, shape design, which is the size of the shapes, and the form, which is the overlapping uh, of the three-dimensional uh, sections of the figure. Definitely playing with the proportions of the figure. Uh, I'm going to be putting some smaller feet on top of this figure to kind of play off the uh, largeness of his upper body, but still keep him in balance. Okay, so I got a pretty good handle on the general proportions of body. So I'm going to go into the head and fiddle with that a little bit, kind of figure out how much fat I can put underneath the chin, uh, even kind of like where the temple is, how much hair he has, uh, facial expression. But then it's right back to the uh, anatomy again, the sides of those arms. And if you look at the inset with the uh, other wrestler, I'm really go, going to go for those bigger guns but now really start to overlap it. So you can see using the blue pencil, reinforce the size of the volumes and how they exist in space. Uh, again, I wanted to, cre to create our, like a real dynamic figure that uh, really occupies a foreground, middle ground, and background. Also, normally at this point, I would really be jumping on the anatomy more uh, and making it fit my figure. Again, since there'll be clothing going over the top of it, uh, exaggerating uh, the, not so much the largeness of the figure, but the athleticism of the figure. So I'm just going to draw a little bit now so you can see how I reinforce all the uh, ideas that I've been talking about already. So now we're at the point where I'm going to use a black pencil to like really reinforce the overlaps. This is the idea behind what we're doing in these first few weeks, is really getting you guys to sort of uh, couple together uh, gesture and form and with the intent of your character. And so as I do this, you can see that I put extra line weight uh, on those cross contour lines uh, at the end of the arms and the wrists, uh, at the ankles, again, sort of reinforcing you no know, mobility of uh, what you're creating. Obviously, you're going to be creating characters that move through in space. So here's just some general overall uh, diagrams of uh, how I put it together and what I was looking for for the final product. It's important to create characters that, uh, though the proportions may be wacky, they are believable and at the same time achieve a lot of motion in their movement and range of movements. So now we're going to change body types and intent. And I uh, found this uh, older lady on Google and put her into Photoshop and kind of fiddled around with the uh, proportions a little bit. I used the distort button in the uh, transforming tools on Photoshop, made her head a little bit larger, skinnied her up a little bit, shortened the legs up. Uh, and then now I'm really going into the idea and uh, messing around with her character, making her more infirm 
and lean over a little bit more and uh, generally go with uh, the idea that uh, when we hang the clothes off of her, uh, she's really going to be very, very bony and it's going to show up. Decided to put a couple of animals in here too, just for the heck of it, a little pug dog, maybe a monkey or a cat in the front. I'm going to throw that idea out just because I'm fooling around a little bit too much. Uh, but it does give you a good idea, like building your character up, uh, that world building that you're going to be doing. So unlike the last figure, I'm really going with this a super emaciated figure. You can see from the insets uh, using those that information there. And bending her over more. She doesn't have a person or left hand, the one closest to the ground, but I'm thinking of putting that in. And I get a good enough idea of the gesture and the general forms that now I'm going to go into the head, made the head a little bit larger, uh, again, just so it can emote a little bit more. And it's a little bit... Uh, out of the norm. Uh, it doesn't look like a regular human being. I want to sort of push that character a uh, tad bit. Again, uh, shutting up and drawing a little bit more and putting some anatomy on there. One of the reasons I'm adding perhaps a little bit more anatomy on this, even though it's a very thin figure, is I'm not quite certain how much clothes I'm going to be putting on top of her, or what even what season it is. Uh, if it's summer, I'm certainly not going to be putting any heavy wool jackets on it. But in the opposite, uh, I may play off the idea of her thinness uh, with some large, uh, bulky uh, clothing later on in my design. Going to shut up and draw a little bit here. You might notice that uh, I'm really going with the cross contour, with the ellipses around the arms and the ball joint for the shoulders and the elbows. One of the reasons, again, for that is, is that I want a mobility to show up. So if I start swinging those arms or rigging that, uh, those forms, that uh, I'll be able to sh figure out what kind of uh, action that this figure can do and make it believable. Plus, it just gives a really good hint of the uh, volume, the sort of the width and length and uh, uh, general form that uh, you're going to be putting on top of this figure later. So I'm going to be pulling back to the photographic reference uh, again to use that to uh, block the face out in the head a little bit more, uh, give it a little bit more of a different hairstyle, uh, accentuate the cheeks a little bit more, certainly the head's a little bit larger. Uh, but then after that, I give myself a little vacation and sort of go off to these different little areas trying to figure out how that may add to, add to the narrative. So we all know the next step on this is we're going to be putting clothing on top of it, and then we're going to be adding props to the figure. Okay, so now I'm going to change and go for the idea of using a child for some reference here. Again, fooling around with uh, what my intent is at who knows, it may not even be a child by the time I finish, but I'm going to use that as my starting point. Uh, again, just sort of kind of get the imagination moving a little bit more. Uh, and I look at the general uh, uh, proportions and more of the action. So I'm using the action as a stream board. And you can see it also with these two kids here. Uh, I'm trying to get the idea of pushing and pulling and uh, really moving uh, the proportions around a little bit. I'm not set. I'm doing the ellipses. I'm seeing where all the general things fit together, but I'm not set yet. I still have more than enough room for imagination. You can see I'm kind of maybe adding another arm there. Not so much adding an arm, but uh, maybe making the arm come up a little bit more. But you'll see that'll change later too. Frankly, I don't know what I'm going for at this moment, but my narrative and my story will tell me a lot. Uh, and I'm going back to this uh, diagram page here showing you all the different body types that I could pull from, a uh, combination of two. If you keep that in your head uh, as you lock this all down and you kind of make the comparisons, uh, you'll have a lot more expression that's available to you rather than just having a, a preset idea of what exactly you want. Having said that, uh, the longer torso of the child is what I'm kind of basically pulling out of in the short little legs here. 
Uh, and then you can also notice I'm giving her body a heck of a lot more twist and turn, but I got that balance over the top of that foot, so it's still believable. So once again, I pulled up a little bit different reference so you'd be able to see uh, the proportional stuff. Uh, even though I think that as I go farther into this, uh, I am changing my mind and uh, not going for so much of a childlike shape, even though that's a proportion. So now I'm beginning to uh, punch up the forms a little bit more, dealing with those ellipses. And perhaps one thing you notice about the ellipses that are the forms that I'm doing, like the end forms, the tubes, and the boxes, is that I really open them up. I don't just do a quick line across it. I really, really go for the ellipse with the steep part of the ends of the overlaps uh, at the peripheral parts of the form. So now I think the uh, reference of the little girl is beginning to disappear. And I'm going a whole different way. I'm sort of adding four arms to it now. And I've definitely made the decision to uh, make the head different. Sort of more robotic, more of a death head. Maybe it's an android. Maybe it's just a real messed up kid. Uh, here she comes back again. Again, as you guys do your homework, make sure that you go into the form. You can see I'm using a black pencil here uh, to reinforce some proportional changes and uh, definitely go with the idea more of volume and mass than just outline. So by the way, you can also use uh, other concept design as your influence. Uh, student showed me this uh, design, the upper one on the upper right, and I thought that it's good, but it could definitely be improved. Uh, the head sort of stuck in the middle of that scythe and where the hand is. Uh, the outfit's a little bit sort of confusing. The body parts are kind of weird, and it doesn't have as much uh, dynamic tension as it could. Uh, the idea of it being sort of a menacing uh, character. And so what I'm doing is I go in with, I'm going in with these larger curving forms. You can see all the way from the head to the arm, uh, from the scythe down to the feet. Uh, and I'm building much more of a clear anatomical uh, breakdown of the thing. So again, once again, so if anybody else looks at this, they'll instantly kind of understand what they're looking at. You can see my little uh, thumbnail sketch that uh, me and the student did together on the upper right hand section of breaking it apart. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking it even farther in this more finished drawing. Uh, I'm drawing feet right now, but later on in the design, I'm going to change them to like uh, lion's feet or giant claws that will sort of dig into the earth a little bit more. Uh, the head, I've telescoped it out, uh, but I'm still going with the idea of the three dimensional form and the overlaps, even getting rid of the reference. So now I'm sort of on my own and uh, even though I'm using it as source material, and it's a good source, is that I want to do a little bit more with it. It's okay to obviously use other people's uh, kind of design as a springboard to get your brain moving. On the other side of it, though, you can't just copy it. Uh, you definitely have to redo it. So I'm making the arms longer, um, bringing up sort of the battle ornaments a little bit more, increasing the size of the rib cage, uh, making what used to be sort of maybe a... Um, a jacket, more of a metal piece that goes over the top that adds to this figure.
even adding the uh, scythe to so the arm of it, uh, the handle of it goes all the way down to the ground and back of the figure. That helps push the head out farther. I'm even changing the shape of that a little bit more. Adding some more negative space. You'll see I twist my hand every now and then is uh, just to get myself an idea. I can look at it and see how the hand fits over the top of that object. Now I'm pretty much there. I'm just going to come in and reinforce a lot of that three-dimensionality and overlaps. Even how the arm fits into the uh, forearm. How the spinal column fits into the pelvis. These are all forms, right? So I'm going to be building off of that. So if I build armor, which I'm kind of going to hint at a little bit later in the, the design, uh, it really reads three-dimensionally because if you model it, uh, you're going to have to know every one of these kind of angles with it, even as a concept design. Maybe these are mechanical parts. I'm having a tendency to make them a little bit more on the uh, solid uh, steel or titanium mode. And there you can see I'm changing the feet into claws. So it brings up the menacing part a little bit more. Now that I look at it, I'd probably go back in the head, do a couple of larger drawings like you on your homework, and then decorate it a little bit more. Give it a little bit more chance to uh, show the pieces and how that head's sort of put together. It's a good stand-in, but it's uh, not as good as it could be on a second or third pass. And then there's back to the original sketch again. Now using this green pencil, I'm kind of fiddling with the idea of would I make the legs longer or wider? Uh, it probably will end up being some more of kind of an armor plating and protective device. Maybe just a pair of pants. Again, it could use a little bit more exploration, but that's a good starting point for it. Now I'm going to block out some heads. Um, just sort of like, just sort of um, freestyling this thing. I kind of had the idea of like a fish head underneath it, sort of a reptilian sort of look on it, uh, mixed in with like maybe a little bit more of a lizard form that you'll see a little bit later. I wasn't uh, really using reference at first, but I came back and used a little bit more. I uh, even sort of went with a little more Abe Sapien from uh, Hellboy kind of vibe to it. And again, you can see a real structural. So, so it's all sort of built up in three-dimensional form. So when I put the body parts on it, uh, it's really going to set and it's going to be more believable and more sculptural. So now that I've got the basic form in, I'm going to kind of come in here and Decorate it, see if it needs some kind of head covering, which I'll understand looks really lame really quickly. So I'm going to erase it. Looks like a bad haircut. But you're not going to know unless you try it. I kind of like to streamline head a little bit more. I don't want to lose that structure or believability in it. That character really has to fit your design, has to fit the idea of the narrative that you're creating. And so I don't want to decorate it a lot, put a lot of secondary sort of stuff in until I make sure that, once again, I have that uh, recognizable structure form on top of it. Now you can kind of see the lizard dinosaur kind of vibe that I'm trying to embed in it.
They're also very anatomical. So you notice there's very much a human head in there because I got my cheekbones and there's a temporal uh, arch and brow bone. So I do want to make this thing so again, so it can be modeled and uh, even in the design at this point, kind of see the three dimensionality, even though it's just a little kind of quick sketch, which by the way, I've sped up throughout the entire video, sped it up twice uh, the speed that it normally would be. So what, what would normally show a two minutes of work, it's like one minute in the video. So once again, changing shape. It sort of started out with something a little bit more aquatic and then uh, kind of added a little bit more animal features to it. I could have messed around with the proportions even more. So right now, right now I'm putting sort of a dog bear thing going on. Yeah, just kind of not really using reference, just kind of highballing it. And But I do have a good grasp of the anatomy in it. So there's just my block out, right? Like I said, I probably could have moved the eyes up or changed the nose and made it a lot wider. But this is a good demo at this point to show you how to block stuff in. You can see I'm moving that pencil all over the place. And now that I'm kind of happy with in general what I have, I'm going to come back and reinforce uh, some of the elements. Now separate the teeth a little bit more. Probably put some whiskers on it sooner or later. There we go. Sort of definitely go work on the eyes a little. Maybe get a little bit of age, some little bags under the eyes. Probably increase that more. Probably could have brought the brow out a little bit more too. So this is kind of what you're thinking of as you're doing it. Is you're like running it through in your head and looking at all the pieces are fitting together as you draw it, as opposed to just rendering. And then comparing that against your other designs for the narrative and the project. So now I'm just going to draw a normal everyday face, all right? Because you will have some of those that your characters, right? They don't have to be space aliens or creatures or whatever. But you might be able to notice, again, I'm working at the hairstyle and the kind of ears. I'm not using any reference, really. And again, that's a good and bad idea. Uh, when you're using reference, sometimes there's the tendency to kind of copy off of it rather than interpret it. But at the same time, if there's a figure that has a really nice set of eyes or a wonderful mouth or this hairstyle, uh, I did use a reference for the hairstyle because she's got this like really beautiful kind of afro that goes off the top of this. And I want to make sure that kind of forms around her head and frames her head a little bit more. Her personality. Also, the other part about this is that uh, I want to pick a figure that uh, will have facial expressions, right? So I can show sadness or uh, joy or anger or whatever that may be. And so right now what I'm doing is I'm cutting her face down uh, the jawline again to kind of focus it around the mouth a little bit more, around the eyes, and then coming into the hair. Remember, you're building a character out of all these parts, and uh, if you accentuate some areas, that's going to be really important in relationship to the narrative. There might be other parts of it that you really don't want to uh, show the viewer too much. So that's what I'm doing right now, is I'm kind of breaking this apart and putting it all back together, uh, thinking of the entire impact and what I want to say about uh, my character and about the narrative. So now I want to go against character. Everybody likes uh, drawing like really um, stripped down, uh, very thin elves. And I thought, you know what? Why don't I just draw an elf like a football player, right? It's like big, blocky, uh, like angry uh, elf character. So I'm going again with that shape, that very blocky, boxy shape, and then uh, kind of playing off of that. I probably uh, dumped the characters a little bit too much on one page, but uh, it's a demo, so we'll just go with that right now.
you can see I'm taking that uh, those cheekbones, even though it's a large figure, and uh, funneling that down in to the frontal part of the face, so that part of the character shows up a little bit more. So the blue pencil sort of shows where I'm a little bit more confident about what I'm going for. It's kind of my statement color. And with that pencil that's blue on one side and red on the other, I can flip it back and forth. So at this point, here's the page. And I uh, hope you guys all get the idea of this. And this sort of idea will continue all through the entire semester. Thanks a lot. See you later.